Hi again, Lori here in Lori's world. <laughs> I still haven't figured out the right places to point here. Ah, okay, that's where the links go is up there. and That's where my logo is. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, anyway, so we are back again, and we are going to jump right into the Gospel of John, chapter 5. And welcome. Let's go to it. Let's read the Bible and study it together. So, oh, let me turn this window on for you so that you're not just having a look at me. <laughs> Okay, so this is where we left off, was at John chapter 5, verse 22. For not even the Father judges anyone, but he has given all judgment to the Son. I found that very interesting. Uh, I And I didn't know that before yesterday when I read this. <laughs> I thought that the Father was the judge, um, but apparently not. Apparently, the Lord Jesus is our judge. Okay, so some principles. Jesus Christ in his humanity is the only one who has ever been resurrected. Others have been brought back from the dead, but they went on to die again. That is resuscitation. But the resurrection saw Jesus ra raised from the dead to live forever. Romans chapter 6 verse 9. Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, is never to die again, death no longer is master over him. And in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 20, But now Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who are asleep. When Jesus was raised from the dead, his humanity was invited to sit at the right hand of God. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 20, which he brought about in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. So these are some basic principles behind this. The third one, we anticipate our resurrection because Jesus Christ was resurrected first and we are in him. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. Now God has not only raised the Lord, but will also raise us up through his power. Romans chapter 8, verse 11. But if the son of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Jesus, Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who indwells you. Romans chapter 6 verse 5. For if we have become united with him in the likeness of his death, certainly we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. The resurrection of believers will occur at the rapture of the church, which is initiated by Jesus Christ. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 and 17. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. And the fifth principle, the judgment of believers will occur at the judgment seat of Christ. Romans chapter 14, verse 10, for we shall all stand before the judgment seat of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may be recompensed for his deeds in the body according to what he has done, whether good or useless. The events of the judgment seat of Christ are given to us in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 11 to 15. 
the bonfire and reward for what remains. Okay, we need to read that. I'm going to pause you for a second. Go. Oh, gosh, I don't have a Bible nearby. Hang on one sec. Okay, so this says the events of the judgment seat of Christ are given to us in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 11 to 15. So I popped that up in my web browser, and I'm not going to share that, but I am going to read it for you. So um, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 11 to 15. For no one can lay a foundation other than the one which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or straw, each one's work will become evident. For the day will show it, because it is to be revealed with fire, and the fire itself will test the quality of each one's work. <clears throat> if anyone's work, which he has built on it, remains, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned up, he will suffer loss. But he himself will be saved, yet only so through fire. Hmm. We'll have to someday come back and read that whole thing. I know it may seem odd that I'm sharing my Bible studies with you, and it's the first time I'm studying the Bible, but that's kind of the point of it, because a lot of people are just learning and are just discovering their relationship with Jesus Christ, and this is important stuff to know. And so it's important to me to share it with you. Um, okay. So sin is not in the picture at the judgment seat of Christ. So as stated in John chapter 5, verse 24, this is not a judgment, but an opportunity for eternal reward. Romans chapter 8, verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. But for the unbeliever, Second Peter chapter three verse seven. But the present heavens and earth by His word are being reserved for fire, kept for the day of judgment and destruction of ungodly men. And in Jude chapter fifteen, to execute judgment upon all and to convict all the ungodly of all their ungodly deeds which they have done in an ungodly way and of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. So, Christ as judge judges the production of the believer to determine if it was accomplished in the power of the Holy Spirit and the Word. If so, it will be rewarded. Principle number six, the resurrection of all unbeliever of all ages will occur after the end of the millennial reign. Revelation chapter 20, verses 11 to 15. And I saw a great white throne, and him who sat upon it, from whose presence earth and heaven fled away, and no place was found for them. And I saw the dead, the great and the small, standing before the throne, and books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged from the things which were written in the books according to their deeds. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and Hades gave up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every one of them according to their deeds. And death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. There again, sins are not the issue. All sins were judged at the cross, so the judgment of the Lamb on his throne is a judgment of their, on their works, which do not measure up to the word of Christ. Principle 7. As we share in his resurrection, we also share in his judgment. Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. And I saw thrones... And they sat upon them, and judgment was given to them. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 3. Do you not know that we shall judge angels? How much more matters of this life? 
Revelation chapter 20, verse 6, blessed and holy is the one who has a part in the first resurrection. Over these, the second death has no power, but they will be priests of God and of Christ and will reign with him for a thousand years. In light of what we have seen regarding resurrection and judgment, we can now see that man has a choice, faith in Christ or rejection of Christ. John chapter 5, verse 23 and 24. In order that all may honor the Son, even as they honor the Father, he who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and does not come into judgment, but has passed out of death into life. Notice, hearing the words precedes faith in the one who sent the Lord Jesus Christ. Honor is given in exactly the same way, which again looks at the equality of the Son with the Father. Jesus drives this point home with these religious leaders. Where are they going to stand when Jesus Christ, the resurrection and the life, calls forth all mankind? John chapter 5, verse 25. Truly, truly, I say to you, an hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God and those who, sh who hear shall live. The ones who hear live. This is the entire human race at this point, believers and unbeliever. This is accomplished by the power given to the glorified humanity of Jesus Christ. John chapter 5 verse 26. For just as the Father has life in himself, even so he gave to the Son also to have life in himself. As noted earlier, this is the humanity of Christ to whom the Father has given eternal life that we then, by faith in Christ, can also share. John chapter 5, verse 27. And he gave him authority to execute judgment because he is the Son of Man. The authority to judge is delegated to the humanity of Christ. Deity has sovereign authority to judge. John chapter 5, verse 28 and 29. Do not marvel at this, for an hour is coming, in which all who are in the tombs shall hear his voice, and shall come forth, those who did the good deeds to a resurrection of life, those who committed the evil deeds to a resurrection of judgment. Those who come forth, the human race, will either be believers or unbelievers, if believers, they will have accomplished the good. Good is agathos, an absolute good according to God's plan. Evil is phallus, which would better be translated worthless. It is used six times in the New Testament, always with reference to the production of the unbeliever or the carnal believer. It can be sin or HG, I don't know what that is, <laughs> or human something, but is worthless in the estimation of God in his plan. And then the Lord returns to his earlier answer to their accusation and attack. He is, in his humanity, obedient to the Father. John chapter 5, verse 30, I can do nothing on my own initiative. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I do not seek my own will, but the will of him who sent me. So Jesus Christ judges based on the will of God. Jesus Christ in his humanity has been taught doctrine by the Father. He heard, and he thus can judge. And his judgment is just because it is based upon doctrine and from doctrine resident in his soul. He is obedient to the will of the Father. So lessons to learn from John chapter 5. Legalism will attack grace and the defense of grace is truth. We cannot fend off legalism without doctrine. 
the Lord Jesus Christ, who was fully God, set aside the use of his divine attributes and submitted to the Father. If he, the unique person in the universe, was obedient to the Father, how much more should we be challenged to be obedient to the Father? Third, as the Father has given the Son eternal life and the authority to judge, we have been given that same life and the same authority by Jesus Christ through faith in him. Uh, the fourth lesson, mankind will live again. The grave is not the end. But after that, for the unbeliever, judgment, but for the believer, reward. As we fulfill the destiny God has for us, use the two spheres of power available to us, spirit and the word. We will reap eternal reward. That is God's plan for you. Fifth, the validation of the just judgment of Jesus is the doctrine he heard from the Father. Our validation for all we do is learning, thinking, and applying Bible doctrine. And finally, the Lord Jesus never calls us to do what he has not also done. C.S. Lewis, in his book, Christian Reflections, compares himself to a sheep who is telling shepherds what only a sheep can tell. He states four bleeding of the sheep regarding false views of Christ and his word. The first bleat. The critics ask me to believe they can read between the lines of scripture, but it is obvious they cannot read the lines themselves. <laughs> the second bleat. The critics ask me to believe that Christ's teachings were immediately misunderstood and misinterpreted by his followers, by his followers, but are now understood by those who read what his followers wrote. <laughs> the critics ask me to believe that anything miraculous does not occur. And the fourth bleat in the C.S. Lewis book, Christian Reflections, those critics tell me that the test must, must be reconstructed to be accurate and that they are the ones who must reconstruct it. As a sheep, C.S. Lewis bleated that because he believed the word of God and believed that God revealed Christ to man, he did not believe the critics. He believed God. And that is what we must do. We must go to the word of God, that word that both comes from God and belongs to God, to find out about Christ. We're going to stop there. I don't know how much more is left in John chapter 5, but we're going to stop there at verse 30. And next time we'll come in and look at the humanity of Christ as explained by Christ. And that will be fantastic. So let me turn this off. Let me, oh, let me apologize for how dark it is. I never did get over there and turn on a light. Um, before I sat down to do this. So it is a little dark and I do apologize, but I thank you for coming and sharing this time with me while I study the Bible. I really do appreciate your time and I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care of yourself. Bye now.